I'm Dr. Madsen Peary, President of the Adam Smith Institute. Welcome to our series, Economics for the Real World. The Nobel Prize winning economist, uh, Simon Kuznets, developed a theory that as an economy moves from underdeveloped status into development, economic inequality will first increase and then level off and decrease as the economy becomes more developed. The supposition is that in a poor country, most of the population is engaged in subsistence farming. Inequality is low because nearly everyone is dirt poor. As industrialization begins, agriculture is mechanized and needs fewer laborers. People drift from the country, from the country farms to the urban factories, and they move to the businesses where the pay is higher. A disparity emerges between the earnings of those who own and run the factories and the pay of those who work in them, and a disparity between the factory workers and those left behind on the farms. This causes economic inequality as the process continues. But as the development matures, the theory suggests that inequality decreases as the country becomes wealthier. Average income per head rises, and, and money is available to spend on social welfare. When the country is fully developed, inequality will have fallen considerably from the peaks it reached in the earliest stages of development. Is the theory vindicated in practice? The results are mixed. People point to China's progress following Deng Xiaoping's economic reforms. Under Mao's leadership, most of the population was at the level of bare subsistence. Indeed, estimates put the number who starved to death in famines at 60 million during that period. Inequality was low. As China under Deng Xiaoping embarked on that upward course, some became richer much faster than others. The wealth was in the cities that sprang up and expanded, and incomes far exceeded those back in the countryside. But as more people began to participate in the new economy, inequality declined, as most of the population now in saw increased living standards. The theory is not without its critics. Now, some observers point to countries whose progress towards development did not seem to fit snugly into the Cousinet's model. Some of the Asian tiger economies that grew so rapidly from the 1960s had a more rapid move towards less inequality after their initial surge and did not show the inverted U-shape of the theoretical curve. Despite the criticism, it does seem apparent that the early stages of development do show an increase in economic inequality that later diminishes. A more significant Kuznets curve covers environmental quality. As countries start to develop, they increase pollution, thinking that food on the table is more important than clean air, lakes and rivers. Their environments degrade in consequence. As they develop and grow richer, however, they can afford to produce more cleanly and put in place the requirements for industry to produce in more environmentally friendly ways. And they begin to undo some of the damage done in their surge towards growth and wealth. Again, their progress can be plotted as an inverted U-shape as the environment grows worse before it levels off and then improves. The environmental Kuznets curve fits rather well with the actual experience of countries that develop. And again, China in its period of rapid economic expansion provides a good illustration. A significant factor in this is the degree of democratic accountability. Democratic accountability that the governments of developing countries have. It seems that the more democratic ones have to heed the views of their population on environmental living standards and may begin the process of improvement sooner and faster than the less democratic ones.